It's great to see you, man, and it's great to hear all the positive things about camp for you so far. How has it felt to you so far to be back? Oh, it feels really good, uh, especially to get back here, get into camp, get in the flow of things, uh, get a little preseason game under the belt. And uh, last year, I didn't have this. I didn't have this uh, this chance to go out there and practice and uh, find a way to get better. But uh, now I have that, so I'm just trying to take full advantage of it. Yeah, because of a new system, a new vibe, does it feel kind of like a rebirth for you? You're finally getting an opportunity here really to show what you can do. You're healthy, and you've got, I think, an offense that could really click for you. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really call it a rebirth, but it's exciting, you know. Um, there's excitement in the locker room. There's excitement all over through the f facility. Um, and we're just we're just ready to go out there and, and have fun and play the sport that we love. And I think the coaches are doing an unbelievable job. I think the players are doing an unbelievable job. So uh, we're just taking one day at a time and just trying to get better one day at a time. I, I know that the likely answer to this will be no, but I have to ask you because it's like the, the human question to me. Everyone knows the circumstance you're in. You need to have a big year. You want to have a big year for your football career um, and for this football team. And with the injuries that have happened, is it scary? Like, do, like, do you feel nervous at all about it? Or do you just need to completely get that out of your mind and go out and play football? No. I can't live like that. You know, I only can control what I can control. And to be honest, the last couple of years, the injuries that I've had uh, have been out of my control. And if it's not in the cards for me, then it's not in the cards for me. But my mind says I'm going to go out there and work and get better every single day. And the things that I can control, um, that's what I'm going to focus on. And everything is out, out of my control, so be it. Just go out there, have fun, play the sport that I love, that I've been playing since I was eight years old, and um, do it at a high level. How, can you put into words how frustrating those injuries were for you, that not being able to do what you knew you were capable of doing? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely was frustrating, but it is what it is. And I, I feel like the player that I'm going to be and the player that I'm going to be for the rest of my career and, and the man that it made me made me to be, uh, it all happened for a reason. I learned a lot of lessons throughout these last few years. And, um, you know, at the time, I couldn't understand it. But now looking back on it, everything happens for a reason. And I, I really believe that um, I'm a better football player from it and I'm a better person from it. How how dialed in were you post-injury, Saquon, to every game? Like, are you the kind of player who wants to be obsessed and watch every play? Or is it hard to watch and do you want to remove yourself a little bit? Um, I'm dialed in because uh, at the end of the day, I just want my team to win. So especially the year when, uh, you know, we came down to the last game and uh, we had to win the last game to give ourselves a chance to get into playoffs. And obviously it didn't work out for us, but uh, I'll I be dialed in um, even though I'm not even though I haven't been there on physical on the field, but uh, I feel like, you know, that's my duty as a teammate is to, to be dialed in and try to root for my guys to go out there and get a win. Do, do you continue to communicate with Daniel when you're not around? Yeah, of course. I mean, only the, really the only time it was like that was like two months, and that's when I was out in L.A. rehabbing. But uh, other than that, I was in the facility. I was in the building. I was around all the guys when I hurt my knee. And then last year when I hurt my ankle, I was there the whole time. Um, you know, I was trying to, get, trying to get healthy and trying to get back as fast as I can. So, um, um, I keep communication with all the guys, and I have a uh, tremendous family and friends and teammates here. I mean, DJ, Sales, Shep, and those guys, I remember they would forget about their whole workout and then come out there right there on that field with me and, and help me and push me uh, to get back. And uh, at the time, it all didn't make sense, but now I can see all the hard work that I put in and the way those guys push me, how it's coming to play now. No, you know, Shep's the veteran on this team, and he hasn't really even been here that long. Mm -hmm. So considering where you were drafted, how great you can be, and the name recognition that you have, do you feel a responsibility to be a leader? Or can, can you take that on on top of everything else that you have? Uh, I don't feel the responsibility to do that. I think that's just how I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only time I really felt the responsibility to, to become a leader uh, was my sophomore year going to my junior of high school football, and that's when I had to, that transition and when I had to kind of figure it out. Now, you know, I feel like that's just me. Um, I go out here and I just try to compete at a high level. I'm a very competitive per person. Um, you know, I think my work out this speaks for itself. And, you know, I don't really feel extra pressure to, to, to go out there and speak and be vocal. Uh, now it just comes a little more natural. I still look up stuff. I still watch videos. Last night I was watching videos of Kobe Bryant, like how he pushed his teammates. Um, you know, I still try to do all those things because I feel like you can always improve and expand your knowledge in, in anything. But for me, it's no pressure. I just go out there and be me. What feels different? Because, like, one thing that we keep hearing is that you look great. This, you've been one of the real bright spots so far, um, and the people are excited. What, what to you feels physically different, and are you doing anything different preparation-wise? 
To be honest, nothing's really different. I could just practice. Uh, <laughs> it's just the ability to, to play. Yeah, I can just practice, and, like, I don't got to really focus. I guess you could say, like, the, the big difference is, like, you know, coming off a knee injury, you you know, you can put that mask on and you can hide it to the world and even to yourself and tell lies to yourself that oh, it's not bothering you just going out there. I kind of thought that method was work, to just lie to yourself and just go out there and, and just grind it out, and the rest of your body's going to catch up and take care of you. Uh, obviously, it took care of me, but, you know, you can go back and watch film and you can see – uh, the hesitation, um, the extra, the extra revolution and footwork and all that stuff, stuff that I don't, that I didn't need to do. Uh, I guess you could say that's a difference, but I'm not going, I'm not going out there second guessing myself. I'm going out there just play football, um, and having fun. And, uh, I'm really excited for the season. I'm not sure if you saw this. I don't think you did, Peter. Here, here's a quote. Being as young as he is, players bounce back for injury all the time. We saw that with Adrian Peterson just a few years ago. I have all the faith and confidence in Saquon. Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Yeah. That's got to make you feel pretty Yeah, good. you don't miss that. You don't you <laughs> yeah, know. That one, that one <laughs> made it through. Yeah, that, that one definitely got brought to my attention. Uh, it was sent to me by a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I was, I never got to watch Barry Sanders play. I, I think he finished career in 98. I was born in 97. Uh, but, you know, with YouTube and highlights, I was able to watch all the stuff that he was able to do and uh, as a kid try to replicate his style. So um, I'm a big fan of Barry and, you know, have, you know, nothing but the most respect for him. And we have a guy like that come and out and speaking up for you like that uh, it means a lot. It means the world to me, so I really do appreciate that. Talking to Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. Um, Saquon, were you able to feel like you, this can be a very tough town? We talk about it on the show a lot. Fans can be very hard of, of, of all the teams. I got to say, I don't know how you feel, Dom, but to me, you – you are really loved by this fan base. Like, I, I, I felt that even through injury and, you know, of course, frustration and disappointment, people want you on the field. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels that more than a lot of other players, the fan base really is rooting for you. Do you do you get that sense as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's two sides of it. Um, there's going to be the negative things said about you, but uh, that's life. That's something that my mom and dad told me as a little kid, and I'm very appreciative of, the, you know, the love and support that I get from, this, from the city, from all the fans here. Um, um, and, you know, there's a reason why they've been upset. You know, I, I haven't been healthy. Uh, we haven't been very successful as a team. Um, and New York and New Jersey, you know, they're proud about their team. They're proud about uh, the stuff that we go and, and what we display out there. And, you know, I was born here. Um, I grew up, basically, I was, a, I was a Jets fan growing up. But when the Jets didn't make the playoffs, I switched to a Giants fan. So, like, <laughs> right. I was, I was, like, that's my brother's a Giants fan. Like, it's, it's I understand it. So I, I, I know uh, why they're frustrated, but uh, I could see the frustration. But at the end of the day, like I'm appreciative of it, of the love and support that I, you know, that they still have, and um, you know, that's something I want to do. I want to go out there and, and, and make those people proud. How do you think this new offense is going to work for you? Um, you know, for me personally, I, I really don't look too much into that. I just feel like that, uh, you know, Cass, Dave, all the coaches do a great job of putting us in position to make plays and. Um, you know, do a really good job of helping us understanding the playbook. Cause a lot, it's a lot. You know, we we do a lot of different things, and um, you know, we try to play fast too at the same time. So, especially when you, for myself or for Daniel, um, when you got three offenses in the last what three four years, uh, it's it's tough to to maintain that. But I think they've been doing a great job, um, and I think you know, I think we're gonna be able to shock some people and, and be able to make some plays on offense. And I think our defense is gonna be amazing. And uh, I know Team Mac gonna have a special team role. Do, are you a big uh Visualizer, like, are you the kind of person who sits home and, and pictures what's going to happen? Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of go dark for a little bit uh, when you're away from the game uh, where you're hurt. Um, that was kind of like the biggest struggle for me. Like I couldn't close my eyes and I couldn't like visualize like me being on the field or making plays. And now like I, I, I feel like, you know, that's back. I feel like I have that confidence back. Um, you know, I feel like before prior to injury, anytime I touch the ball, it can be a touchdown um, from anywhere on the field. And I feel like I have that. I feel like I have that explosiveness, that burst, um, that looseness, all that stuff back. So I'm excited to do all that. You know, we, we reference it all the time because we all saw the, the Derek Jeter doc, and, and he talks about he used negative, uh, negativity as fuel. He wants to prove everybody wrong. Do you, yeah. you have that same type of mindset? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to balance, you know. Uh, last year coming into the season, you know, I, I kind of got away from that. Uh, There's a lot of people saying negative things about me after a torn knee. And, like, when, you're take, when the game's taken away from you, you're kind of just at a, a position, at a spot where you're just like, man, 
I'm just so grateful to be able to come back and play football. Like, that's all I was really thinking about. Now it's kind of like I have that mentality that I just want to kill everything. Like, I just want to go crazy. And <laughs> it's not just because of the negative things that are said about me. That that does fuel you, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm human at the end of the day. Uh, so it does light, you know, light a fire on me a little bit. But um, I, I know how special I am, and I know how great I'm going to be. And that's why I want to do it. Now, you've always, when we talked to you in the past, I know you've never been a contract-focused kind of dude, um, but obviously that is going to be a conversation this year. What will happen? Will you get franchised? Will they extend? Um, how much does that weigh on you, that, that future? Um, like I said, I kind of really don't think too much into it. Uh, I feel like you know I'm doing myself a, a disservice if I have that mindset or that mentality. Um, so my approach to it is one day at a time. I know that's not like the cliche answer, but like I'm a firm believer in, like, like, I'm going to come in every single day and try to do all the little things I can do and try to be the best Saquon Barkley I can be through the good, through the bad, through my mistakes, through the great plays. And if I come in with that mindset and working in each day and try to take away each day, each day, and, you know, it's, it's that constant battle, that constant climb up that mountain every single day. Um, at the end of this, at, end of, at, the every, end of, at the end of everything, I'm going to be able to look back and, and be satisfied with what happened. Uh, Saquon, we really appreciate your t the time, and I, I think I speak for both of us in saying it's like, you know, we we'll, we talk about sports 24/7, you know, and you cover athletes 24/7. Um, the 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 few years we've gotten to see you at camp, you you are truly one of the best mm -hmm. dudes to talk to. That's why this is a huge Yankee Met day. Mm -hmm. But what we said whenever Saquon shows up, we want right. to make time because that's the kind of energy you've put out since you've been here. So you. we appreciate you, man, and wish you the best luck this season. Thank you so much. That shirt, that shirt fire, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Classic, yeah, sure, yeah. classic red man. Thank you very much, Saquon. Appreciate your that time, good, man. Bro. Thanks, The man. great Saquon Barkley from Giants Camp.